Hi there, everyone. This is Melissa from DJ Event Planner. Today, we're covering the changelog topics from August 5th through August 26th, 2019. To begin, we will look at the features that have been added with this update. We have added new merge tags for links to specific evaluation forms in the Merge Tag Wizard page. To see these new merge tags, log into your DJ Event Planner account. Then go to Setup, Documents, Add New or Choose an Existing Document, then click on the Merge Tag Wizard button. In the search bar, search for Evaluation Form, and the software will generate the new merge tags for specific forms by using that form's unique ID number. You can now automatically run a selected booking helper after an event is added. To add those settings, go to Setup, Application, Booking Helpers, you can add a new one or choose an existing helper and edit. Then scroll to the bottom of the page for Automation Add Event. You can determine how it will be run based on event status, event type, package, and add-ons. We have added a setting to allow Client Profile Image URL to appear on the Add Edit Event form. To turn this feature on, go to Setup, Application, Event Form, then go to Layout, Client-Based Fields, and make sure to check Profile Image URL. Once enabled, you can see the Add an Image link by adding a new event in your account. On the Client tab, you will see the Profile Image URL under the Name section. We have added some additional anti-spam measures for the Request for Information form. And we've added new settings for the Add Event page for planning forms viewable and editable. The default for both is true, which means when you add an event, planning forms will default to both viewable and editable. You can see this by adding an event and going to the Planning tab. We've added a new setting which allows you to control who the guest request notifications to the client are sent from. Go to Website Tools, Guest Requests, Settings, then look for the Send From option. Your choices are Master Administrator, Salesperson, or Primary Employee. We've added a new setting which allows you to customize the background color, font color, font weight, and font size of the header bars for these pages. You can access this by going to Setup, Application, Appearance. You will see here options for your default header stylings for both the Event Report page and one for the Event Edit page. You will also see we've added a new setting which allows you to customize the background color, font color, font weight, and size of the header bars for the event, client, employee, venue, and contact vendor pages. Look for the section labeled Custom Report Page Section Header Colors. For scheduled emails, when on the Scheduling tab, Upon saving, the form is checked to see if an employee role is entered for scheduled emails. If it is, then a warning is displayed if the All Assigned Employees option is not selected. We've added a new setting to set the font size for mobile devices. This is separate from the desktop font size. Go to Setup, Application, Calendar. Under the General Settings in the Appearance section, you will see Mobile Font Size. This will only affect mobile devices and not tablets or desktop machines. We've made a couple of additions for options for the iCalendar setup. Go to Setup, iCalendar, Add New iCalendar. 
We've added next action and next action date and also custom event text fields as options for fields to be included in the iCalendar feed. Merge tags are now enabled for the send email to specific email address field for booking helpers. In the additional send to field, you can enter something like the client's email address and also a merge tag for a custom field one. In this case, the email would be sent to your client and to any valid email address found in that custom field one. For scheduled emails, merge tags are now enabled for the also send to field and merge tags are now enabled for the specific email address field under the Settings tab. You can now run a booking helper after an email is manually sent. You can now toggle between Table View and Card View for the Employee Portal. Card View is a more mobile-friendly and will be the default appearance on mobile devices. Table view is more desktop friendly and will be the default appearance on the desktop. Also in the employee portal, the employee specific role for an event was added to the event pages. Your employees will see this when signed into their profile and go to their upcoming events. We've added a warning when trying to add an HTML based merge tag to a plain text employee based template. HTML merge tags, such as an assigned employee table, for example, cannot be displayed in plain text formats. For your employees' profile accounts, we have added a warning about employee profile images that exceed 1 megabyte in size. Using these images significantly slows down the loading of web pages where the image is displayed. In Financials, Payments, then Pending Payments, we've added the option for Card View. The default on mobile devices is Card View, while on the desktop, the standard List View is the default. You can toggle between the two views by clicking the button at the top of the page. And finally, we've added a new setting that allows salespeople to assign pending payments to events. You can set that new permission by going here, Main Menu, Employees, Find a Salesperson, click on Quick Edit, under the Permissions tab and in the General Settings section, click on Assign Pending Payments. Now on to the changes that have taken place in this time period. When adding a new add-on in the Add Edit Event page, the system looks for add-ons already in the system with the same name. If the new add-on name matches another add-on, it is linked to that add-on instead of creating another one with the same name. When using the Event Picker for multi-event invoices, the events will now be sorted by event date in ascending order instead of descending order so that your newest added date will show at the top of the list. This is also true for multi-event documents. The display order of the Event Picker was changed back to most recent events at the top of the Event Picker list. Upon generation of the document, the events are sorted in reverse order, with the newest appearing at the bottom of the invoice table. For event form settings, we've added labels for client-based custom fields that are configured. You can find these by going to Setup, Application, Event Form. Under the Layout tab, look for Client-Based Fields. The Request for Information Form and Contact Us Form anti-spam algorithm was updated to result in less false positives when you use the website tool on your website. We have made numerous changes to the interface for the employee portal in order to improve usability on mobile and tablet devices. These changes include a tweak 
to the time off system, the event list table, timesheet submission form, and the calendar page. We've also changed the setting so that if no front page is set up by the admin, the front page link will no longer appear in the employee's menu. This applies to employees, salespersons, and administrators. When viewing a request for information inbox message, the system checks to see if the assigned venue exists in the database. If it does not, it sets the venue ID as zero for the inbox message. This was causing an issue when adding a request for information as an event. Next, go to Setup, then Meeting Locations. We've changed the view from Table View to a new Card View, and we've also added a new Search feature to the top of that page. When in an event and have chosen a tab or a drop-down tab in mobile version, clicking on the Edit button will now open to the same tab in the Edit window. On the dashboard, we have added the count of events on the side panel when in Show Separately mode. You can see this by seeing the number located at the top of the list of events that are shown separately in that mode. We've made additional user interface improvements to the features in the employee portal for basic level employees. And we've also made a number of user interface changes for pending payments and edit pending payments found under financials to be more mobile user friendly. And finally, here are the items that were fixed during this update, August 5th to August 26th, 2019. Please note the continued changes and improvements to our beta features. As always, you can find the latest updates to our change log by logging into your DJ Event Planner account and clicking on the Support button on the left-hand menu.